Ugh, ads are such poop. Subscribe to ACAST Plus now to skip ads and more for just $1 a month. Click the link in our show notes to learn how. And hey, we're on Patreon too. Your support helps cover the cost of running a podcast. For $2 a month, you can get early access to all our episodes ad-free, plus bonus episodes exclusive to Patreon subscribers only. Visit patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse to sign up now. Welcome to Sacrilegious Discourse. I'm husband. And I'm wife. Together we're reading the Bible for the very first time. We grew up without religion and wanted to know what all the fuss was about. Well, what have we learned so far? That God is a dick, and apparently some people believe in talking donkeys. We're not trying to pass ourselves off as experts. Nope, we're just reading the Bible for the first time and giving our first take reaction. If you'd like to join us in this venture, you might consider starting at episode one. Otherwise, jump in wherever you like. All right, let's go read the Bible. Yeah, let's get to it. Husband! Wife! Do you know what today is? It's late on a Saturday. It's Q&A Saturday. Late. Late. (laughs) Yeah, so uh, what are we uh, Q&A-ing today? Okay, so I've been... Which chapters first? Oh, shit. (laughs) Um, uh, Chapter, wait, no. The Book of Esther, chapters 1, 2, and 3? Yes, that that is correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, so that's what we're covering. Right. And we're going to talk about Queen Vashti. Okay. A, a lot and a little bit about who the fuck is King Aesaurus. I don't even remember the Aesaurus. You wouldn't because it wasn't there, but it was, but it wasn't, but I didn't what? say it. Yeah, I know, right? Stay okay. tuned. All right. Let's get into this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay, so who is King Aesaurus and why do I give a fuck? Right. Right? Yeah. Okay, so you know how at the beginning of each little section, um, as we're reading, there's those little headline blurbs yeah. that like subtitle the next section or whatever? Right, and right. we decided not to read those? Right. Okay, so I've been sitting on this since Wednesday oh. because um, the chapter started out, Queen Vashti defies King Aesaurus. Or okay. Aesaurus, or however you say his name. Got it. I kind of like the dinosaur, right. Aesaurus. Aesaurus. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I've been saying in my head. Got it. But the whole rest of the chapter referred to King Xerxes. Right. So I filed that away in my little brain hole <laughs> and was like, I'm going to check that shit out. Right. And so now I'm checking that shit out. Okay. All okay? right. Yeah. So, because it's actually subtitled, Queen Vashti defies King Aesaurus. Aea- okay. Okay. Yeah. So. Who's King Aesaurus? Right. And why is the rest of the chapter referencing Xerxes? Xerxes, yeah. So the Hebrew form of Aesaurus is believed to have derived from the old Persian name of Xerxes I. Oh. The Persian name was independently rendered in ancient Greek as Xerxes, and the E's have all these fun clicky doodles on top of all different, you know, blah, 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 cool stuff. Okay, um, the Persian name was independently rendered in ancient Greek as Xerxes, and many newer English translations and paraphrases of the Bible have used the name Xerxes. Okay. Such as the one that we're reading from. Yeah. Except for that one subtitle. That's weird that they subtitle it the one way, but then Mm -hmm. refer the other. Exactly. That's that's why I was confused. Yeah. There is no. Reference to known historical events in this story that we're reading. Okay. okay? About Queen Vashti and Got it. Esther and whatever. Okay. Okay. Some consider the narrative of Esther was given to provide an origin for the Jewish holiday Purim, which we will get into in these coming chapters. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I couldn't read too much more without giving myself spoilers about what's ahead. Right. Right. But Purim is a very important Jewish holiday and... Um, this story supposedly gives the origins of that holiday. Okay. okay. And the name Aesaurus is usually understood to refer to a fictionalized Xerxes I who ruled the Achaemenid Achaemenid Empire. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, between 486 and 465 BCE. Got it. Okay. okay. So that's all I'm going to say about that guy, because like I said, the rest kind of gets into 
well, other shit we're going to cover. What's Purim? Well, we're not there yet. Right, right. Okay? Yeah. So just file that away in your brain hole. Okay. Okay? Yep. But then now let's get on to Vashti. Vashti. Got That's it. That's who I'm really interested in right after who was King Aesaurus. Okay. Okay? Yep. Vashti, as the first wife of Persian King Aesaurus in the book Esther, was a queen of Persia. She was either executed or banished for mm. her refusal to appear at the king's banquet to show her beauty as Aesaurus wished. So we were right. Something bad did happen to but her. But we don't know if she was banished or right, killed. Right, right. But something bad. Something bad. Either way. Yeah. She was get gone. Right. Yeah. So that refusal, her refusal to come forward yeah. at his beck and call might be better understood via the Jewish tradition that she was ordered to appear naked. Except for oh. that crown. Like, remember, she was Wait, told to this, appear. They aren't Jewish, though. Xerx- Xerxes is not Jewish. Remember, right. they don't even like Jewish people. Right. But the Jewish tradition is that she was ordered to appear naked. Okay. Not the, the Jewish tradition of the story, the way the Jews oh, tell oh, the story, oh, oh. Okay. is that she I'm was sorry. ordered to appear naked. Got it. Got it. Not that they were Jewish. Got it. Okay. okay. So, in yeah. In lore, she was supposed to appear naked. Yeah. Okay. Except for the crown on her head. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Now, in the Midrash, which is one of the um, supplemental books, supplemental books written by um, rabbis that kind of give us a what's what. Right. Um, Vashti is described as wicked and vain. Okay. Okay. Now we'll get into that more in a minute. Okay. So I've got a little asterisk note more later. Sure. Okay. So file that away again in your brain hole. Right. However. She is viewed as an independent-minded heroine, heroine, in feminist feminist theological interpretations of the story. Got it. And then I've got a double asterisk. More on that in a minute, too. Okay. Okay? Yeah. So, I'm already loving this because I'm like, oh, shit. Who's (laughs) Vashti? And I'm going to need a t-shirt that says, Justice for Vashti. I need somebody to track all the fucking t-shirts you need. (laughs) Jesus. But this one I really need because, Got it, yeah. you know, feminism. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Because the text lacks any references to known events, some historians believe that the narrative of Esther is fictional and the name Aesaurus is used to refer to a fictionalized Xerxes I. Got it. Some historians additionally argue that because the Persian kings did not marry outside a handful of per- Persian noble families... It is very unlikely that there was ever a Jewish Queen Esther. Right. And that in any case, the historical Xerxes' queen was a mistress. Okay. okay. Yep. So this is very likely made Not true of, in any way whatsoever. Right. Got and it. again, it's just a story to talk about why the holiday of Purim was Got it. created so or whatever. An entire holiday has an origin of complete fiction. Yes. Okay. Sound That tracks. Got it. Yeah. Totally. Okay. So according to the Midrash, Vashti was the great-granddaughter of King Nebuchadnezzar II of Babylon. Yeah. The granddaughter of King King Amel Marduk and the daughter of King Belshazzar. Okay. That King Belshazzar. You know, okay. how bizarre. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy. Right. Okay. During Vashti's father's rule, mobs of Medes or Medes... And Persians attacked. Okay. They murdered Belshazzar that night. Vashti, unknowing of her father's death, ran to her father's quarters. There she was kidnapped by King Darius of Persia. But Darius took pity on her. How and... dare he? How dare he? <laughs> yeah. He took pity on her after he kidnapped her and gave her to his son Aesaurus to marry. Ah. Okay. Yeah. As you know, you just give women away. Yeah. When you feel sorry for them, so. you're like, oh, here. Go Instead of a Tonka with, truck, you know, you, right. you give women. Here, you can have a Barbie and a truck, like a Hot Wheels, yeah. or a new bride. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so remember I told you I had two, I'll get there in a minute. Yeah. Okay, so here's the first I, one. I gotta interject real quick, though. Mm-hmm. Vashti. Yes. These people killed her dad and her entire family, probably, mostly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they give her mm-hmm. to... Their son mm-hmm. to marry. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be very happy with that scenario if I was a person in the same scenario. In Vashti's shoes. Yeah, like that's a shit ass scenario. Yeah. So just yeah. saying. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, that, I, that, no, that, that was totally it. Agree. That was it. I mean, 
death would have been the alternative. So sure, death or you can live with my son. Because it's I'm still sorry a shit you. situation. Oh yeah, totally, totally, so. definitely agree. Okay, so the first asterisk that I wrote was that you know in some uh, stories she's viewed as a piece of shit asshole, right? Right. Okay. We're going to talk about that one. Okay. Based on Vashti's descent from a king who was responsible for the destruction of the temple, as well as on her unhappy fate, the Midrash presents Vashti as wicked and vain. Okay? Remember okay. Remember I told you about that? She wouldn't have been the one making the decision, though, about destroying the temple. That was her dad or grandfather or whatever the fuck he right, was. Right, but she, what they're saying is she comes from that line. bad people. Okay. And her her dad was bad. She's bad. And, um, you know, she didn't come when the king called, so fuck that bitch. I, I really don't think that women had a lot of opportunity to be bad in this, in they this era. They did not. They did not. They just were, and they got pushed around and, and, and you know, they had to do what they were told, basically, or mm-hmm. they get banished slash executed. Right. Right. So, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm glad to hear you say that, but we will talk about her as Sure. A... No, I'm just I'm I'm just saying like I'm I don't like people saying she's bad. I'm like she didn't fucking do anything. She got her parents killed. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Well, she didn't get her parents killed. Well, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. Her parents no, I'm sorry. Were I said killed. that I said that badly. Yeah. But whatever. Yeah. But no, I get what you're saying. Now, since Vashti is ordered to appear before the king on the seventh day of the feast, yeah. the rabbis argued that Vashti enslaved Jewish women and forced them to work on the Sabbath. Okay, but again, they're not Jewish. These people are not Jewish. And if they're in a, like, it wouldn't have exactly been her decision. There might have been slaves. I'm sure there were slaves, in fact. But, like, do you have sympathy for their, like, when you have slaves? I, I, okay, I'm not trying to defend Vashti, right? But she's told to hold a banquet for the women of the, the area. She right? wasn't told to hold one. Okay, she, she was holding one. She did hold one okay. the same day that he held his. But she needs help getting it ready, and there are slaves. You don't take into question whether or not they need the day off or not. You're like, no, you're slaves. And I'm not agreeing with the scenario. Just right. be clear here. Yeah. But it, this would have happened with anybody in that era. They would have been like, no, you work for me. I don't mm-hmm. give a fuck about your fucking traditions. Right. The, you, yeah, nobody's talking about the slaves that would have served the king's banquet. Right, right. Right. Yeah, that's why that's what I was getting at. I'm yeah. sorry. I'm not trying to defend slavery in any way whatsoever. It's a horrible thing. Obviously. But also the women of that era are a lesser type, you know, they are not right. treated as correctly. equals. They were not correctly. treated correctly. Yeah. Right. And they are pulling from the same pool of slaves that the king would have been using. Yes. So I don't know that that was specifically something that she would have said, I'm going to make these people work on their holiday or their day or their Sabbath. You know, like right. it's just part of what happened back then. Exactly. And again, not defending slavery at all. So I hear you and I agree with you, but let me continue. Sure. Okay? Sorry. I'm getting a little heated here. About I stuff, hear so, you. Yeah. I really appreciate it. husband. Yeah. I love you. <laughs> So they attribute her unwillingness to appear before the king and his drinking partners not to modesty, but rather to an affliction with a disfiguring illness. Okay. So she didn't want to appear to them naked or otherwise, they say, because she had some kind of disfiguring illness. Got it. Okay. Which, you know, that just goes along with... And, of course, as a bad guy, only bad guys get disfiguring illnesses. Sure, yeah. That's how that goes. One account relates that she suffered from leprosy, while another states that the angel Gabriel came and, quote, fixed a tail on her. Oh, man. Right? She had a fucking tail? What the fuck, right? Man. Now, the latter possibility, the tail, okay, is often interpreted as a euphemism for a miraculous transformation to male anatomy. What? That the tail was actually a penis. I'm, I'm okay. So, so, so an angel came down and, and, and did. Poof, um, you're a man. Hmm. Right? (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't know what to say about that. Like, is this our first representation of trans? (laughs) Right? In, in like that's that's an interesting little like that could be maybe a whole fucking episode in and of itself. Yes, it could. What the fuck? Yeah, I I will be looking more into that, obviously. Right. Yeah. But um, 
the little section I was looking at didn't have a lot else to say on that. So okay. All moving right. on. Yeah. 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 <laughs> According to the Midrashic account, Vashti was a clever politician and the ladies' banquet that she held in parallel to her husband's banquet uh -huh. represented an astute political maneuver. Okay. Since the noble women of the kingdom would be present at her banquet, she would have control of a valuable group of hostages in case a coup d'etat occurred during the king's feast. Oh. So she was actually doing the king a favor, maybe-ish? No. Nope. Like by having control of the powerful people's wives well maybe maybe but also it was um protection for her so that she could not be um knocked from her throne right in front of anybody when she decided no i'm not gonna come to you got it she's like and i have all these other people hostage here well that didn't work out very well no it didn't okay but that's enough about that Remember I said I had a second asterisk? Yes. And this was about her being viewed as a feminist icon. Okay. Okay. Yep. Vashti's refusal to obey the summons of her drunken husband has been admired as heroic in many feminist interpretations of the Book of Esther. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of how I took it. Like, mm -hmm. she stood up to this guy who's drunk an asshole, right? Mm hmm So, whatever. Early feminists admired Vashti's principle and courage. As yeah. well they should. Right. Harriet Beecher Stowe called Vashti's disobedience the first stand for women's rights. Wow. Right? That's amazing. Yeah. And, um, Elizabeth Cady Stanton, and I had to look her up because I had never heard of her. Yeah. She's an American writer and activist who was a leader of the women's rights movement in the U.S. during the mid to late 19th century. Okay. So 1800. Yeah. Um, anyway, this chick, Elizabeth Cady Stanton wrote that Vashti, quote, added new glory to her day and generation by her disobedience, for resistance to tyrants is obedience to God. Hmm. Interesting, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so then there's Vashti in pop culture, and there was like a whole string of things, like the name Vashti is given to many characters. It's a cool name. Yeah, it's a cool name, and then knowing what it represents makes it right, even cooler. Right, right. Right? Um, there were only two that I thought were worth, uh, or I'm sorry, there was only one that I thought was really worth um, repeating here. Yeah. yeah. Vashti makes a brief appearance in the Veggie Tales episode, Esther, the girl who became queen. You know, Veggie Tales, right? Yeah, that's a religious cartoon. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. in the episode, she is abruptly thrown out of the palace after she refuses to make the king a sandwich in the middle of the night. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I just thought that was worth mentioning. <laughs> yeah. What a what a PC way of putting the whole thing. Yes. Yes. Jesus. Yeah. Um, way to go, Veggie Tales. Mm, you yeah. done did good there. I guess. Right. So that is my little two cents on both King Aesaurus Rex and his wife Vashti. Vashti. All right. Well, that was our uh, Q and A for um, Esther one through three. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow we're going to be back with. Our um, sacrilegious book club. And then on Monday, we'll be back with... Esther, chapter four. All right, guys. We'll see you then. Bye. Hey, wife. I guess that's the end. But husband, that's just sad. It doesn't have to be. We are on lots of social media platforms like Twitter. Our handle there is sacrilegious underscore D. For D's nuts. Oh, my God. Stop doing that. Anyway, we're also on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. There's a link to all of our social media sites at our website. Ooh, we have a website? Yeah, it's sacrilegiousdiscourse.com, where you can also find a link to our merch shop. We have a merch shop? Yep. We have podcast-themed clothing, mugs, notebooks, and more, as well as an atheist and science-themed products. Wow, our fans should really go check that out right now. Definitely. They can get in touch with us by sending an email to sacrilegiousdiscourse at gmail.com. But before they do that, we could really use some help. Oh yeah? With what? Well, it's not free running the podcast, and we need some financial support in order to get better equipment, which will free up time so we can concentrate on our podcast and our fans. Okay, so what should they do? Head over to patreon.com forward slash sacrilegious discourse and sign up as a contributor on our podcast. Supporters there receive additional bi-weekly episodes that we record just for our Patreon members for as little as $2 a month. 
Also, we'd really appreciate it if you would like and subscribe on whatever platform you're using. And Apple Podcast Reviews help us out tremendously. Like and subscribe. Leave an Apple review. Join us on Twitter. Support us on Patreon. That's a lot of instructions. Don't forget to say thanks. Thanks. Okay, bye.